As far as initial treatment option for rheumatoid arthritis, uh, I would say that 99% of my patients start with methotrexate. Now, if someone is a premenopausal female unwilling to do birth control, we can't give them methotrexate because it's a pterogen, as is leflunomide. So that would obviously affect our options. If someone has chronic liver disease or refuses to drink alcohol, if someone's a heavy alcohol user, we would not use methotrexate. But 99% of our patients end up starting on methotrexate. Uh, we have good clinical trial data from multiple clinical trials, which has shown that we can induce remission or low disease activity in about 30% of patients presenting with early rheumatoid arthritis, which may be sustained for a year or two or longer. So we start with methotrexate, which in my practice, and rheumatologists vary, I start with 15 milligrams orally, weekly. I, sp I split the dose to try to enhance absorption, uh, decrease the variability in absorption, and then we bring them back in four to five weeks. Some will be due six weeks. And at that point, if they've shown some initial response, but still have active disease, I will escalate the dose to 20 milligrams. So by eight weeks, all of my patients are on 20 milligrams of methotrexate. Uh, we you know, also will, can commonly with that, with early disease, we'll have patients on ANSEDs, and while many patients will be on low-dose prednisone to bridge them through that first few months of disease where they have active disease waiting for methotrexate to work. Methotrexate can work as early as one to two weeks, but most people take, uh, have peak benefit between 12 and 24 weeks of methotrexate. So we give a therapeutic trial of at least 12 to 16 weeks. If a patient has no response to methotrexate at all by eight to 12 weeks, they're not going to respond. And that's, I'm gonna move on to another therapy. But most have some improvement which in increases over time. So methotrexate is the anchor drug for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, many rheumatologists, including myself, if a patient has a partial response, but at 12 weeks is still not where we want them to be, and they're on 20 or 25 milligrams orally of methotrexate, I will consider subcutaneous methotrexate because we know that about another third of patients will respond by switching from oral to subcutaneous methotrexate. Uh, if the patient continues to have active disease between month three and month six, depending on the patient, at that point we will add combination therapy. We will combine uh, biologic therapies or other conventional synthetic DMARDs uh, with uh, methotrexate to try to induce a remission or low disease activity. There is some issue with underdosing of methotrexate. Uh, various uh, claims-based databases or observational registries have actually suggested that many of our colleagues are using doses of methotrexate less than recommended. Now, there are reasons to use low doses of methotrexate. Methotrexate is renally excreted, so if you have a patient who has underlying kidney disease, you do need to use a lower dose. If you have an elderly patient, those patients, they might have a normal serum creatinine and BUN, but they may have reduced renal function because they're small muscular mass in, in elderly patients. So there are indications for that, but there are some rheumatologists who are risk adverse and don't push the dose as far as the dose should be pushed. But to be fair, 20% of people on methotrexate, maybe even 30%, do not like methotrexate. Uh, they feel poorly for 24 to 48 hours after taking the oral methotrexate. Um, GI upset, nausea, uh, fatigue, headaches, canker sores. Subcutaneous methotrexate can get around that problem in some people, but not all. So, um, you know, that's part of the reason that methotrexate is relatively underdosed uh, in, by some rheumatologists. We do use subcutaneous methotrexate in addition to trying to improve efficacy in patients with a partial response to oral methotrexate, but we also use it for toxicity. Uh, there's reasonable data that methotrexate subcutaneous has less GI toxicity than the oral methotrexate. There's some marginal data that it might reduce the likelihood of stomatitis, oral ulcers, and so forth. So we will, in a patient who is responding but having toxicity, try the subcutaneous methotrexate. Methotrexate possibly could be underdosed by rheumatologists, but I think it is the anchor drug. It is the primary drug utilized. And it really for two reasons. Um, first of all, it's effective, as I mentioned, in up to 30% of people, very effective. Uh, but we are not allowed by formularies of insurance companies to get other therapies, such as biologic therapies, 
unless a patient has been demonstrated to me a non-responder or a partial responder to uh, methotrexate. So generally what we do is we will treat a patient uh, for 12 to 16 weeks with methotrexate. At that point, if um, they've had a very good clinical response, we may go to 24 weeks. Uh, if they've had a marginal clinical response, uh, then I think it's time to move on earlier. Uh, and we generally will move on to a biologic or a target immunomodulator like uh, tofacitinib, cell chance. And um, so it, it varies to some degree, but it is not appropriate to continue methotrexate past six months in someone who continues to have active disease and is not in low disease activity or remission.